Hey, Brutal Plant listeners, this is Eric Peterson. Today I have the honor of being joined by Jake from Syrah. Jake, thanks for joining me today. Hello, and uh, th- thank you for uh, inviting me to be a part of your show. It's an yeah, honor. Yes. Um, so congratulations on the new album. I've heard it. Not everybody has heard it, but it's a, an amazing album. Um, is there? I wanted to ask you about the process of recording real quick. The writing and the recording of this album, how is it different than or the same to Letters to Myself? And what was that process like? Yeah, yeah. First of all, thank you. And obviously, no, not everyone has listened to it yet, but it's only a couple of days away from the release now. And I, I can't honestly wait to have it out there because it's been a bit... A bit this time has been a long ride for us. It's, uh, you know, the album has been ready for more than a year. And, uh, you know, I've just wanted it to come out. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I keep putting it off my shoulders and start touring on it. It has been a pain, to be honest, just to have it lying around. But, you know, that's life. So, sometimes you, you have to plan stuff and, you know, make sure that an album get, is getting the proper release uh, and and support that it needs. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. And, and um, the difference between this recording and uh, the first one was, yeah, to begin with, the first letters to myself. We recorded in four different studios in four different countries, uh, and uh, this one we recorded uh, all together with Jacob Hansen in Denmark. So you know it went. It was a little bit easier to you know to plan the whole uh, the whole recording process, so to say, on this one. Yeah. yeah. And what was how long was the overall recording process? Uh, I think we spent. Uh, I have to ask my uh, fiance here. How long was I in Denmark? A month. Yeah, a month and a uh, yeah a month and a half. I think uh, uh, my memory is. Uh, really really bad when it comes to remember stuff like that <laughs> but i think yeah a month and a half uh, around that okay and then as you guys are maturing as a band um did you feel that the recording process changed or was it did you have what's that like as a band like does each person put in or does you all come together and hash things out or how does it work with you guys what, 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 was that a nicer way to say that we're getting older? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a... It, when I said, yeah. The you, band matures. It matures, now. yes. <laughs> uh, first album was... It was um, all, yeah, all the songs were written by me and Jesper uh, 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 because like there was no other members in the band at that time and hey dude uh, and uh, on this album uh, uh, it was was a lot of me and Jesper but uh, also Oike came in and wrote a couple of tunes and also Alex took a big part in you know the arrangement of the drums on this one well we we, we let it loose on the on the demo sta- stage uh, on the drums so that he could feel more how do you say involved yeah in, like, the process mm-hmm. on, on putting his uh, signature stance on the songs to so to say so I, I i would absolutely say that this was a teamwork even though um i was the one that you know uh, did most of the you know pre-production work and you know uh, produced the songs you know took all the ideas and you know made them into real songs so you know it was still a team effort where everyone contributed on each other's songs in a really good way so you feel like it was more of a group coming together rather than the first one it was just more you and you and jesper and then it all fell together. I mean, I, I mean, like we've never me, I, 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 neither me or Jesper have been, you know, uh, as we used to call it, like band Hitlers in any way. You know, we always invited everyone to, you know, participate and you know, add their their stamps on onto everything. But but the the only difference on the first album was that we had everything ready when when we recruited the other guy. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. So, you know, there was not that much time to you know. Uh, work on you know uh, 
or to perfect any of the songs. Um, yeah. Uh, ob obviously, both Oiga and Alex did the same thing on the first album, but you know, <laughs> it's hard to explain. But you know, they were the songs were eighty percent done when we recorded uh, "Letters to Myself," and maybe they were sixty percent done when we recorded this one. So uh, you know, we we let it more loose on this one, and uh, I think that came out as a better thing in the end. Good, good. And then, as far as songs on the album, I know it's. It's got a lot of diversity as far as songs go, and um, um, so are there any songs on the on the album that have particular special meaning to you versus other songs on the album? I know they all have special meaning because they're all part of you, but is there any songs in particular? Yeah, I, uh, I guess by this time no one has been able to uh, miss the fact that I wrote this Battle From Within song about my brother. Uh, he passed 10 years ago uh, and um, uh, it was uh, it was unfortunately uh, due to suicide and, and uh, it, it, it was something that took us all by surprise and uh, uh, to be honest I don't believe that he really wanted to do that it was something that he, he, I, I think that he tried to to make a stand where, where he was trying to show people how bad he felt and unfortunately went all the way. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I wanted to, you know, to beginning I didn't want to do anything at all. I, it, it, the song came con subconsciously for me uh, when I was writing, the, the, the lyrics just came to me and I decided to to actually wrote about it, it or write about it. It was. It, it, it was hard to just decide if I was going to do it or not, but it means a lot to me, and it also helped me to understand that I can't just hold these feelings within me. I need to let them out. I need to talk to people. I need to tell people how I feel, and uh, it's also a clear message to other people that are in the same situation, or even people that are in a situation where they are the one that are in my brother's situation. And I, I want to tell them that, you know, there is help to get and get make sure you get help before it's too late. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, as you know, that song, is it strikes me really hard too, because I feel like as people in the heavy metal community, we, we always feel that we are alone um, and part of us, that's why we turn to heavy metal, it's because we feel like that gives us an out. And so th the song itself means so much to me because it just, it's a way to tell people that you're not alone. And exactly. you can get the help you need, and we're all here as a family together. Exactly. That's, that, that's absolutely true. Um, and I'm, I'm very... I'm, it feels weird to say that I'm, I'm happy that you liked it, but I guess that you understand what I what I mean when I say something like that. I mean, I I'm happy that this song could give something to you, that I could give you something that that you could enjoy with, like bringing up a subject that is touching this awful subject. Yeah, and it's it's you're really just tackling a, a subject that's. It's kind of taboo, and the and the, the video itself pretty much says that itself at the very beginning when it has that quote from the World Health Organization. I feel like it's a subject we don't want to talk to about mental health in general, but it's something that affects us, I feel like, all of us at one point or another. Yeah, absolutely. It does. And, and it, it's obviously different in different parts of the world. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding my kid's hand now because he is completely crazy. Uh, it's obviously uh, different in, in other part or different part of the world, but I grew up uh, in a situation where boys and men were supposed to be strong, and uh, I used to refer it as to like the Jason Statham kind of mentality. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't mean Jason Statham in the way that he, him as a private person, but but all the roles that he plays uh, as an actor, like where 
you don't cry, you shouldn't show emotions, you know, like uh, man up and all that. And it's the, fuck is, the fucking stupidest thing ever. It and is. Like, everyone needs to be in contact with stuff like that and, and, you know, talk about your feelings because the only person that you, you hurt trying to be the cool guy is yourself. Exactly. And it's such a stigma around it that, that you're, you're, you're not a, allowed to talk about it. And even in different, in, in some cultures, you know, you get bashed if you show stuff like this, if you talk about it. Exactly. You know, like if, it's like a sign of weakness and you, you will lose, um, uh, your whole face in front of uh, of the rest of the country if you do stuff like that. Exactly, and it, it's sad. It's sad, and I I think things are changing, but it's slow, slow changing. But it needs to change because we're all in this together. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I I think for you, I mean for me, relaying this to you, if if this song helps. One, two, ten, a thousand, a hundred thousand people. That's that's an amazing accomplishment, and it needs you know that's that's what I'm saying is is it it was a release for you and it helped you, but in turn it helps other people too, which is amazing, and and that's how that's what music should do. Exactly, and I just say uh, I used to say that if you could help. Doesn't matter if you're a musician or an actor or, or something, where w w someone that is in the public eye, if if you could help one person come into a better life or a better situation or something like that, you know, uh, I I feel that I won. If exactly. You, if you get what I mean. No, I exactly. And, and a, couple, a couple of days after the release of this battle from within, we actually got an email. I don't want to go into to like the whole situation about it but there was someone that was in a really bad place saw the video and decided to change her mind and, and you know it's terrifying to hear that people are feeling that bad but on the on the contrary it feels very nice to know that you know that person got a complete different view of life after listening to our music so you know it's, it always feels nice to be able to make something good. And I mean, overall, I mean, most musicians want to talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But when you can change somebody's life and help save a life, that's the ultimate. You know what I mean? So, so props and oh cheers God. to you guys. Yeah, don't get, me, don't get me started on that subject because, <laughs> like, I think that is, <laughs> I think that the '80s has played out its part really well. I mean, like, the world was a different place uh, between 1981 and, you know, 1989, yeah. where all those things happen. And I, I can't stop laughing about bands that are being formed nowadays, where they think that the only way to succeed is to, like, believe that they live on Sunset Strip <laughs> and uh, that it's 1980, and, you know, the way to success is to, you know, uh, drink too much and you know take drugs and you know uh, lay with prostitutes. I, I I I can't fucking stand that that way of of you know uh, portraying yourself yeah. and, and believing that that is some something to strive for. Yeah, yeah. No, I. That was a time in life, and it was a time and and things have evolved and things are different, and thank God they're different now. <laughs> I mean, like, Nicky Six is sober and, uh, and you know, he has, has realized that, you know, life has more to give than, you know, trying to uh, be a fucking, yeah, rock star within parentheses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so, you know, like, if Nicky Six have, have been able to do that, well, new bands look at Nicky Six now, not, not who he was when he was 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I think he's a raw model now, not... not back then no no not not back then at all so so i just you know props to you guys and to you yourself for writing that song because i think it's it's an amazing piece of work yeah but i also think that the fans should have the biggest salute uh because without them the video would never have become uh, what it turned out to 
Sure. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, I am so grateful for all those fans that, you know, helped out and sent in materials and took their time uh, uh, making an effort uh, of making this video to what it was or what it or what it became. Yeah. I think it's just amazing. Yeah. And it, it's it what it does is it speaks true to your guys' as fans that you know they are they are real people, so of course. Of course, of course. And, and you know, without the fans we don't have a job. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So it's um yeah, I always try to have this special relationship with the fans, but now, now we really took it to the to the edge of yeah. how close we can be. Because uh, um, I usually I, I usually say that without you we're nothing, and that, uh, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. So speaking of being a rock star, you guys are heading out on the road this week, right? Yeah, we are, and uh, we all turned the. Deterians and um, you know we're trying to you know load up our PS4 with games and uh, you know the chessboard is ready. You know we're the most boring rock stars ever. We go to <laughs> go to sleep early and you know make sure we're hydrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember on your last American tour. Hopefully your your bus doesn't the heater doesn't break. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, no, no. When when we. Uh, when we did that tour, I mean, we were stuck in, in between Canada and Montana, we had minus, minus 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, that must be like, yeah. How cold is that even in Fahrenheit? Yeah. It must be 10, 20. Yeah, exactly. 10 Fahrenheit, something like that. Yeah. It was so cold. So that we, we had to rent another car to be able to, and we also had to cancel one show due to that. Yeah, that was the the show that I was at, <laughs> the Boise show. Yeah, the Boise. Yeah, that's true because we had to continue driving straight to the next one. Yeah, yeah. But it was impossible. It was impossible to stay in the car. It was uh, or the bus. It was the generator broke down, and uh, a fortunate. Uh, enough. There was heat in the driver's cabin, so so you know the driver could still you know take yeah. the car to where it yeah. needed to be. So so you guys are doing Europe, and you're headed out with Battle Beast. Uh, yes. Have you done a tour with them before? Uh, we we've done three shows with them uh, before. We did that in the beginning of the summer, and that was was fantastic. They headline uh, big shows in Finland, like. Uh, you know, black boxes in in, um, in ice holes, uh -huh. you know, 5,000, 4,000 capacities. And that was fantastic. That was really, really nice. And, and it was such a such a great time to meet them and, you know, become friends with them. And, you know, fantastic fan, uh, fantastic live act. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to, to play with them for, you know, 22 more shows. Yeah, that'll be fun. And then when you guys are out on the road, you were – do you, do you have any, like, I know you said you're kind of boring, but do you have any routines or do you have anything, favorite parts about touring or not so favorite parts? Back in the days when, you know, I was still uh, uh, living as th those guys that I was talking about before, uh -huh. uh, you know, I was, I was sleeping away all my days. Nowadays, I am really trying to make sure that I see something. Yeah, uh, I, I've been doing so many tours uh, throughout both Europe and, and the US, and there's still places I've been several times that I've never seen. So, you know, I, I try to make sure, you know, to have a walk or, you know, to go and see something that is worth um, looking at, like, uh, like a museum or, you know, like an obelisk, uh, mm -hmm. obelisk or whatever, just, just to make sure that, you know, I remember something from that place because yeah. Other, otherwise, it's always just that red door that goes into the to, to the to the club or the arena, and uh, you know, then you're back on the bus again. So that's what I'm trying to do now. But uh, other than that, I'm not into food or anything like that. So, so you know, like I don't care about the local, local cuisine. But uh, oh, okay. Uh, other guys in the band are that they always try to you know make sure that they go and and. Uh, taste some local local cuisine or, or you know 
they know that there's some special bread in that city or whatever. Oh, ah, okay. I just try to have, have a have a walk and you know look, see some stuff uh, on town. So then, after you guys finish, you guys finish this European tour. Do you have? Is there next year? Do you have any plans for touring? Uh, we haven't anything, uh, you know, that is official, uh, officially booked, like for for the public yet. But yeah. We're looking at trying to do uh, yet another Euro uh, European run, and uh, maybe go to Japan, and uh, then it's all the summer festivals that comes up that I, that we hopefully will will get both for uh, both for the U.S. and for for Europe, and then hopefully. And we'll come over to the states in the fall. That's at least what I'm aiming for. Oh, that'd be and great! So, uh, hope we can manage to do that in some way. Well, I know you're doing uh, you're doing the Sabaton Open Air this year or next year, I should say. Yep. And um, that's actually where you and I met for the first time. Um, how is that for you? Because it's kind of your home. It's I mean, it's fairly close to where you're at. So, are you look. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, like, uh, Sweden is like the longest fucking country in the world. It, it's like, what, what is it? It's like 3,000 3, kilometers long or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, so, 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 Sabaton Open Air is like in the middle of the country, and I live down in the south, so it takes me five hours. To oh, does it really? Hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um,. Uh, I've been there a couple of times. It's a great, great festival, and so I'm really, really happy that, that uh, Sabaton Open Air invited us, and, and it, really looking forward to that. So, are you going to come over this year? I'm hoping to come over for this this next one. It's going to be my uh, one of my milestone birthdays, so I'm hoping that I can make it over. Awesome. 20 years old. I'm going to bring yeah, you a present. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and um, I was actually going to try to do the uh, what's the what's the other one that's the week before that's so the little farther south the it starts with an S uh, score I can I or scores Jetter or something like that I think it is uh, yeah yeah I know which one you mean I yeah. know which one you mean yeah and I mean but for me if if anybody's listening and and you have a chance to go to the Sabaton Open Air. It's an amazing festival because it's not a huge festival, but it's got such a family atmosphere. I mean, when I met you, you were in the kids area, and I mean, I don't know many festivals that have kids areas, you know. No, the the, the kids areas is fantastic, and they let kids uh, try out different uh, different instruments, and they try to, uh, you know, they they have musicians there, which you know, uh, teach uh, teach the. Uh, the kids to play and you know it's really really great it is it is so the last thing i wanted to ask you is uh uh i was i was i've met i met a couple of your guys and um i was i was talking i asked them about you a little bit and i told them that i felt like you were a very passionate person and um i and I, that's one of the things i admire the most about you and so i it made me started to wonder what how you would describe your bandmates um, in one word, and why you would describe them that way? I mean, how, and then how would they describe you? Uh, first of all, thank you for for thinking that I'm passionate, but I am uh, in so many ways. But but I want to know what the what the other guys told uh, said about me. Well, they, they haven't told me anything. I, they, <laughs> I, I, so just to be honest, Alex said that you you were. You could you could be funny without being funny in a serious way, and um, <laughs> and he told me that you you have horrible dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, I do. Even my kids think that I have horrible dad, dad jokes. So that's uh, that's absolute uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, <laughs> but now my bandmates are the they are the best. Uh, I mean, like. Uh, when we when we formed this band, me and Jasper, we made sure that when we decided to to go on as a full full on band with uh, with you know drums and guitars and bass, we didn't care much about like if if the members were the best on their instrument in the whole world. We wanted to make sure that you know the people that got onto this band had the first of all you know the same goal as me and Jesper had and you know like it's uh, it's it, it, 
I, I just want to become the biggest fan in the world. I've always wanted that since I was 15 years old. And, you know, obviously we will probably never be the biggest fan in the world. But, you know, like that's my goal. And I set, always set the bar high. Uh, and uh, I wanted the people in the band to be band driven people and not egocentric figures yeah. in any way because none of us are that and you know i wanted people to understand that we're building a brand we're uh we're making music as a band and nothing else and that 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 was really really important for us and that you also have you know the same uh, views of you know how to be in life and uh, uh you know alex and oiga and peter that was with us from the beginning you know, all had that same approach to being a human being, you know, a decent fucking person that, you know, don't uh, bullshit anyone else. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 we have a song on the new album called Blood Brothers, and, and that is just about what we are. And, you know, we, I would say that we love each other like brothers, and, you know, we, we ha always have each other's back. And, um, in any situation, so yeah, you know, yeah. There's nothing more than love towards my <laughs> my my dear friends in the band. Good, good. Well, that's that's so. So I've got to ask you, based on that note, where did the inspiration for the song "Hit Me" come from? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a song. Of, it's a, it's a song about truth. Ah, okay. All right. So so it's a, it's an ad lib on "Hit Me with the Truth." Ah, okay. All right. I, I, I tried to explain that for my fiance, and she just thought that I was a fucking idiot because she couldn't. Uh, it, she, 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 she said that, that, why don't you just say that then? <laughs> it doesn't sound as good that way. It just doesn't sound as good. You have to read the rest of the lyric to understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but the Hit Me song was written, uh, the, the, the intro riff and the most part of it was uh, was written by Oige, the uh, Oige Valo Virta. Uh -huh. And, and I, I needed something to be really punchy, uh, <laughs> uh, vocal wise. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I just put, you know, the layers of layers of layers of things on and then, you know, What's punchier than hit me? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's it right there. That's it. So, yeah. well, Jake, about that, I, I appreciate your time. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm so excited for this album. And I'm so excited to see everybody's response when it comes out, um, because I think they're going to be uh, so excited for it. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys grow and grow and mature. Um, as a band, so <laughs> yeah, mature. Yeah, unfortunately, we have no other option than to mature. No, no. <laughs> uh, but you know, my my one of my mottos in life is getting older is not optional, but growing up is always optional. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's a wise uh, set of words yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, no, but I I I agree with you, and I, I can't wait to see the see people and fans response on the album and uh, I want to say to those uh, out there that are listening to this please uh, if you don't know who we are you know give, give the album a spin and you know if you like it please share it to your friends because we need all the all, all the help we could need uh, you know we need to you know be able to make this band bigger and uh, also give us the opportunity to come to the states and play yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again, Jake, and I appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you and talking to you again in the future. Yeah, same, right back at you, and uh, thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course.